86 begins with our first independent single, Here Comes Everybody. The history of the single, Here Comes Everybody, is uh, the guy who ran one of the Glasgow's most famous clubs, the sub club, Graham Wilson, uh, wanted to release his own records, and he'd heard this demo of Here Comes Everybody. Give us some money. Mm -hmm. We put us in a recording studio um, called Park Lane Studios in the south side of Glasgow with producer Bobby Henry and acclaimed engineer Kenny MacDonald, Kenny of great drum sound fame. And um, we re-recorded that song with full Latin percussion, Latin brass. It wasn't programmed, it was organic. It was like something Latin groove. As you see, that was the beginning of 1986. That was one of the first things we did. It was a calling card record. I mean, it was just it was saying, let's put everything on that we love about music, which was funk and then um, quite radical lyrics and kind of ambitious big arrangement. The thing about it on the B side of it, mm -hmm. um, because it's very important to think about the B side of this record, was a song called First to Last. Very, very broken hearted song. And I remember thinking, I wonder, I wonder how that will go. I wonder what people will make of that. Actually, it was crucial to us getting picked up and signed later on in the year because people could see that this wasn't just another kind of, you know, brash, post-funk, punk, 80s band, that there was a lot of sensitivity and classic songwriting ambition going on on the other side as well. There was also a third track called The Successes of Monetarism, which was three minutes of blank silence, as I seem to remember. <laughs> it was the 80s. <laughs> it was all right. Come and join the And then I guess we're part of the whole pop process of the time, which was that you uh, you know that you're a hot music town, music city. You know that people are coming up to see you, but they have to find out about you. So you do your local gigs in Glasgow. That's where we were. And then they get reviewed. Mm. And then the reviews send off blinking lights in London Central. And then that process sends people up to start to see you playing in the gigs, which generates reviews, which generates more London A and R interest. And then that kind of that kind of merry-go-round begins. We got very good reviews. There was yeah. a lot of people supportive of what we were trying to do. True. So we're buzzing away. Uh, we're trying everything. We're, we're, we're extending ourselves in all in all directions: soft, sensitive directions, big, brash, confident directions. We're pulling a band together, a regular band together, beginning to kind of assemble that from local musicians at the time. In terms of the chronology in front of us, July is when we sign our major record deal with Circa Records. <laughs> they signed Hue and Cry. We hadn't figured out what we were doing yet. No, 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 so no. for them to actually think, right, we're going to take a, a gamble on these guys, um, and then it was quite an amazing thing to sign to them. It's uh, we were very young. You know, I just remember being very young and it all making no sense to me whatsoever. I didn't think we had enough songs, but they signed us on those songs that we had. I mean, what a year. So basically we were bustling away for seven months. Eventually the dam breaks, Al McNeil, our manager, helps us get this deal. And then from July, it's just as frantic because we're trying to write songs and we're, we're, to, we're, we're wondering what, we, what video, what's going to be the first single and we're trying to figure out what the videos are going to be like. I mean, it's just this whole bustle of activity that just steps up to another level again. We record and I refuse, and it is, it, what, I, it, we don't really haven't really settled our own band yet, and so we're, we're in a room full of major session musicians recording. Paul Brady's band we used, yeah. and we used uh, Sting's producer. So Dream of the Blue Turtles was Sting's of major album, uh, Post the Police. That's right. And um, Pete Smith was the guy that produced that record, so we liked that record. The London record business was kicking in, so it was introducing us to publicists, it was introducing us to photographers at a different, at a different level from what we'd done before. The whole ball was starting to kind of roll, but it was rolling towards something at the end of the year, so we're beginning the year playing Fury Muddies in, where was that, in Glasgow? Down at the Brimelow. Down at the Brimelow. The so we're beginning the year playing there, and then we're ending the year in Los Angeles basically, where we are sent over 
to do a video for a song called I Refuse, which of course we record indoors because I don't want to do an outdoors cheesy LA video for some obs obscure, perverse reason. Because you didn't want to do a cheesy LA video. That's right. The exact reason. That's that, that's the exact reason. <laughs> um, but then we meet, begin to meet the main, major American record labels and their staff and their people and start to sort of glad hand and schmooze. So, so really it's that, but you, the end of the year is we're in the music business proper. They we're in the mid late 80s music business proper. We're shaking all the hands. Well, we did a session in LA, remember, with Jean Baptiste Mondino, who at that time was one of the great fashion photographers of the age. Creating images for us that we'd never even imagined could have been created. Yeah, incredible year. images. And then we finished it off, we came back. We must have been in some state. Obviously, we're much better back then. Much better. Um, and we did a gig at the Limelight in London as a showcase gig um, because, as Pat said, I refused the single came out on the 29th of December 1986. And we did a showcase round about then. And at that showcase was Harvey J. Goldberg, the guy that went on to produce our first two albums. So it's a launch pad year, definitely a, a launch pad year, moving, on, moving the rocket onto the big launch pad, ready to go. And then, and then the next year, but we'll leave that till the next time. Oh, and from there to that's